The history of string theory spans several decades of intense research including two superstring revolutions. Through the combined efforts of many researchers, string theory has developed into a broad and varied subject with connections to quantum gravity, particle and condensed matter physics, cosmology, and pure mathematics. Topic 1943–1959, S-matrix theory String theory is an outgrowth of S-matrix theory, a research program begun by Werner Heisenberg in 1943 following John Archibald Wheeler's 1937 introduction of the S-matrix, picked up and advocated by many prominent theorists starting in the late 1950s and throughout the 1960s, which was discarded and marginalized in the mid-1970s to disappear by the 1980s. It was forgotten because some of its mathematical methods were alien, and because quantum chromodynamics supplanted it as an experimentally better qualified approach to the strong interactions. The theory was a radical rethinking of the foundation of physical law. By the 1940s, it was clear that the proton and the neutron were not point like particles like the electron. Their magnetic moment differed greatly from that of a point-like spin minus one half charged particle, too much to attribute the difference to a small perturbation. Their interactions were so strong that they scattered like a small sphere, not like a point. Heisenberg proposed that the strongly interacting particles were in fact extended objects, and because there are difficulties of principle with extended relativistic particles, he proposed that the notion of a space-time point broke down at nuclear scales. Without space and time, it is difficult to formulate a physical theory. Heisenberg believed that the solution to this problem is to focus on the observable quantities—those things measurable by experiments. An experiment only sees a microscopic quantity if it can be transferred by a series of events to the classical devices that surround the experimental chamber. The objects that fly to infinity are stable particles, in quantum superpositions of different momentum states. Heisenberg proposed that even when space and time are unreliable, the notion of momentum state, which is defined far away from the experimental chamber, still works. The physical quantity he proposed as fundamental is the quantum mechanical amplitude for a group of incoming particles to turn into a group of outgoing particles, and he did not admit that there were any steps in between. The S matrix is the quantity that describes how a collection of incoming particles turn into outgoing ones. Heisenberg proposed to study the S matrix directly, without any assumptions about space time structure. But when transitions from the far past to the far future occur in one step with no intermediate steps, it is difficult to calculate anything. In quantum field theory, the intermediate steps are the fluctuations of fields or equivalently the fluctuations of virtual particles. In this proposed S matrix theory, there are no local quantities at all. Heisenberg proposed to use unitarity to determine the S matrix. In all conceivable situations, the sum of the squares of the amplitudes must be equal to 1. This property can determine the amplitude in a quantum field theory order by order in a perturbation series once the basic interactions are given, and in many quantum field theories the amplitudes grow too fast at high energies to make a unitary S matrix. But without extra assumptions on the high energy behavior, unitarity is not enough to determine the scattering, and the proposal was ignored for many years. Heisenberg's proposal was reinvigorated in the 1956 when Murray Gell Mann recognized that dispersion relations like those discovered by Hendrik Kramers and Ralph Kronig in the 1920s, see Kramers Kronig relations allow a notion of causality to be formulated, a notion that events in the future would not influence events in the past, even when the microscopic notion of past and future are not clearly defined. He also recognized that these relations might be useful in computing observables for the case of strong interaction physics. The dispersion relations were analytic properties of the S matrix, and they imposed more stringent conditions than those that follow from unitarity alone. 
This development in S matrix theory was based on Murray Gell-Mann and Marvin Leonard Goldberger's 1954 discovery of crossing symmetry, another condition that the S matrix had to fulfill. Prominent advocates of the new dispersion relations approach were Stanley Mandelstam and Jeffrey Chu, both at UC Berkeley at the time. Mandelstam discovered the double dispersion relations, a new and powerful analytic form, in 1958, and believed that it would be the key to progress in the intractable strong interactions. Topic 1959 to 1968: Reg theory and bootstrap models. By the late 1950s, many strongly interacting particles of ever higher spins had been discovered, and it became clear that they were not all fundamental. While Japanese physicist Shoichi Sakata proposed that the particles could be understood as bound states of just three of them the proton, the neutron and the lambda, see Sakata model, Jeffrey Chu believed that none of these particles are fundamental for details, see bootstrap model. Sakata's approach was reworked in the 1960s into the quark model by Murray Gell-Mann and George Swag by making the charges of the hypothetical constituents fractional and rejecting the idea that they were observed particles. At the time, Chu's approach was considered more mainstream because it did not introduce fractional charge values and because it focused on experimentally measurable S-matrix elements, not on hypothetical point-like constituents. In 1959, Tullio Reg, a young theorist in Italy, discovered that bound states in quantum mechanics can be organized into families known as Reg trajectories, each family having distinctive angular momenta. This idea was generalized to relativistic quantum mechanics by Mandelstam, Vladimir Gribov, and Marcel Froissart, using a mathematical method the Zomerfeld Watson representation discovered decades earlier by Arnold Zomerfeld and Kenneth Marshall Watson. The result was dubbed the Froissart Gribov formula. In 1961, Jeffrey Chu and Stephen Frouchy recognized that mesons had straight line reg trajectories in their scheme, spin is plotted against mass squared on a so called Chu-Frouchy plot, which implied that the scattering of these particles would have very strange behavior. It should fall off exponentially quickly at large angles. With this realization, theorists hoped to construct a theory of composite particles on reg trajectories, whose scattering amplitudes had the asymptotic form demanded by reg theory. In 1967, a notable step forward in the bootstrap approach was the principle of DHS duality introduced by Richard Dolan, David Horn, and Christoph Schmidt in 1967, at Caltech the original term for it was, "...average duality", or "...finite energy sum rule duality". The three researchers noticed that reg pole exchange at high energy and resonance at low energy descriptions offer multiple representations approximations of one and the same physically observable process. Topic 1968 to 1974 dual resonance model The first model in which hadronic particles essentially follow the reg trajectories was the dual resonance model that was constructed by Gabriel Veneziano in 1968, who noted that the Euler beta function could be used to describe four particle scattering amplitude data for such particles. The Veneziano scattering amplitude or Veneziano model was quickly generalized to an n-particle amplitude by Zero Koba and Holger Beck Nielsen. Their approach was dubbed the Koba Nielsen formalism, and to what are now recognized as closed strings by Miguel Virasoro and Joel A. Shapiro, their approach was dubbed the Shapiro Virasoro model. In 1969, the Chan pattern rules proposed by Jack E. Patton and Hong Mo Chan enabled isosfan factors to be added to the Veneziano model. In 1969 70, Yoichiro Nambu, Holger Beck Nielsen, and Leonard Suskind presented a physical interpretation of the Veneziano amplitude by representing nuclear forces as vibrating, one dimensional strings. However, this string-based description of the strong force made many predictions that directly contradicted experimental findings. 
In 1971, Pierre Ramond and, independently, John H. Schwartz and André Naveau attempted to implement fermions into the dual model. This led to the concept of «spinning strings» and pointed the way to a method for removing the problematic tachyon CRNS formalism. .Dual resonance models for strong interactions were a relatively popular subject of study between 1968 and 1973. The scientific community lost interest in string theory as a theory of strong interactions in 1973 when quantum chromodynamics became the main focus of theoretical research mainly due to the theoretical appeal of its asymptotic freedom. Topic 1974 to 1984 Bosonic string theory and superstring theory. In 1974, John H. Schwartz and Joel Shirk, and independently Tamiaki Yonia, studied the boson-like patterns of string vibration and found that their properties exactly matched those of the graviton, the gravitational force's hypothetical messenger particle. Schwartz and Shirk argued that string theory had failed to catch on because physicists had underestimated its scope. This led to the development of bosonic string theory. String theory is formulated in terms of the Polyakov action, which describes how strings move through space and time. Like springs, the strings tend to contract to minimize their potential energy, but conservation of energy prevents them from disappearing, and instead they oscillate. By applying the ideas of quantum mechanics to strings it is possible to deduce the different vibrational modes of strings, and that each vibrational state appears to be a different particle. The mass of each particle, and the fashion with which it can interact, are determined by the way the string vibrates—in essence, by the «note» the string «sounds» the scale of notes, each corresponding to a different kind of particle, is termed the «spectrum» of the theory. Early models included both open strings, which have two distinct endpoints, and closed strings, where the endpoints are joined to make a complete loop. The two types of string behave in slightly different ways, yielding two spectra. Not all modern string theories use both types, some incorporate only the closed variety. The earliest string model has several problems, it has a critical dimension d equals 26, a feature that was originally discovered by Claude Lovelace in 1971. The theory has a fundamental instability, the presence of tachyons see tachyon condensation. Additionally, the spectrum of particles contains only bosons, particles like the photon that obey particular rules of behavior. While bosons are a critical ingredient of the universe, they are not its only constituents. Investigating how a string theory may include fermions in its spectrum led to the invention of supersymmetry in the West in 1971, a mathematical transformation between bosons and fermions. String theories that include fermionic vibrations are now known as superstring theories. In 1977, the GSO projection named after Ferdinando Gliotzi, Joel Shirk, and David I. Olive led to a family of tachyon free unitary free string theories, the first consistent superstring theories see below. Topic: 1984 to 1994, first superstring revolution. The first superstring revolution is a period of important discoveries that began in 1984. It was realized that string theory was capable of describing all elementary particles as well as the interactions between them. Hundreds of physicists started to work on string theory as the most promising idea to unify physical theories. The revolution was started by a discovery of anomaly cancellation in type 1 string theory via the Green-Schwartz mechanism named after Michael Green and John H. Schwartz in 1984. The groundbreaking discovery of the heterotic string was made by David Gross, Jeffrey Harvey, Emile Martinek, and Ryan Rome in 1985. It was also realized by Philip Candelas, Gary Horowitz, Andrew Strominger, and Edward Witten in 1985 that to obtain n equals 1 
Display style n equals one. Supersymmetry: the six small extra dimensions, the d equals ten critical dimension of superstring theory, had been originally discovered by John H. Schwartz in 1972, need to be compactified on a Calabi-Yau manifold. In string theory, compactification is a generalization of Kaluza-Klein theory, which was first proposed in the 1920s. By 1985, five separate superstring theories had been described: type one, type two, IIA and IIB. And heterotic, so 32 and E8 times E8. Discover magazine in the November 1986 issue, Volume 7, Number 11, featured a cover story written by Gary Torbs, "Everything's Now Tied to Strings," which explains string theory for a popular audience. In 1987, Eric Bergchef, Ergen Setskin and Paul Townsend showed that there are no superstrings in 11 dimensions the largest number of dimensions consistent with a single graviton in supergravity theories, but supermembranes. Topic: 1994–2003, Second Superstring Revolution In the early 1990s, Edward Witten and others found strong evidence that the different superstring theories were different limits of an 11-dimensional theory that became known as M-theory for details, see Introduction to M-theory. These discoveries sparked the second superstring revolution that took place approximately between 1994 and 1995. The different versions of superstring theory were unified, as long hoped, by new equivalences. These are known as S-duality, T-duality, U-duality, mirror symmetry, and conifold transitions. The different theories of strings were also related to M-theory. In 1995, Joseph Polchinski discovered that the theory requires the inclusion of higher dimensional objects, called D-brains, these are the sources of electric and magnetic Raman-Raman -Raman fields that are required by string duality. D brains added additional rich mathematical structure to the theory, and opened possibilities for constructing realistic cosmological models in the theory. For details, see brain cosmology. In 1997-98, Juan Maldacena conjectured a relationship between string theory and n equals four supersymmetric Yang-Mills theory, a gauge theory. This conjecture, called the ADS CFT correspondence, has generated a great deal of interest in high energy physics. It is a realization of the holographic principle, which has far reaching implications. The ADS CFT correspondence has helped elucidate the mysteries of black holes suggested by Stephen Hawking's work and is believed to provide a resolution of the black hole information paradox. <laughs> Topic: 2003 present. Equals. In 2003, Michael R. Douglas's discovery of the string theory landscape, which suggests that string theory has a large number of inequivalent false vacua, led to much discussion of what string theory might eventually be expected to predict and how cosmology can be incorporated into the theory. Equals. Topic. See also. Equals. History of quantum field theory. History of loop quantum gravity. Pomerons in string theory. Equals equals notes. <laughs>